Welcome to this complete tour of Seattle Tacoma International Airport, or SeaTac. SeaTac's the busiest airport in the American Northwest, and it's a hub for both Delta and Alaska Airlines. SeaTac's an aviator's airport. Boeing's primary production facility lies just 30 miles north of here, and Seattle is home to many aviation and travel businesses. Even if this is your first time in the air, Seattle's airport is simple to navigate. Let's explore. SeaTac is spread across six concourses, oriented south to north alongside the airport's three parallel runways. Four concourses branch off a central terminal, and two satellite concourses can be reached via an underground train. You can access all concourses without having to re-clear security, too. The southernmost concourse, Concourse A, is also SeaTac's biggest, stretching a third of a mile from its first to last gates. Concourse A's northern gates host Delta Airlines, for which SeaTac is a hub. These gates host hub connections, like Atlanta and JFK, high-volume destinations like Orlando and Las Vegas, as well as short-haul connections to nearby Portland and Spokane. The concourse is narrow, and gates exist only on one side, so it takes a few minutes to walk its length. Towards the end of the concourse, you can find flights for United Airlines and its Star Alliance partner, Air Canada, which uses the concourse's two remote stands. United connects SeaTac with most of its domestic hubs, while Air Canada connects to Canada's three busiest markets, Toronto, Montreal, and nearby Vancouver, just 130 miles away. Concourse A and B branch off at the same point, but they look wildly different. No single airline dominates traffic in B. Instead, it's shared between three carriers, Southwest, Spirit, and JetBlue. Southwest serves 11 non-stop destinations, including several of their hubs, four Californian cities, and St. Louis, a route that I didn't know existed. These three carriers are found near the end of B, along with stairs to the underground people mover. Alaska and Delta use a few gates closer to the main terminal. Between A and B to the south and C and D to the north, you'll find a large pavilion area with tall ceilings and plenty to see, so long as it's daytime. This is a great place to sit and relax and enjoy one of Seattle's famous cups of coffee. Concourse C is dedicated entirely to Alaska Airlines. Alaska Airlines is the fifth largest airline in the U.S. behind the Big Three and Southwest. Alaska Airlines serves more than 80 non-stop destinations from its hub here. This concourse is a mirror image of Concourse B with a large gate cluster at the end and a people mover station downstairs. Concourse C is also home to one of SeaTac's two Alaska lounges, which you'll find to the left as you reach the end of the concourse. Concourse D is shared between Alaska, American, and Frontier Airlines. American provides service to a majority of its hubs from this terminal, but it's looking to expand its international offering here, with concrete plans to begin service to London Heathrow and Bangalore, India starting in 2021. While serving fewer destinations than other legacy carriers at SeaTac, the D gates seem busy to me. Concourse D also features a new departure hall for remote stands. Frontier Airlines currently uses this seven-gate departure hall to provide service to their hubs in Denver and Las Vegas, as well as Ontario, California, and seasonal flights to Cleveland and Austin. C, D, and the North Satellite are connected by an underground people mover, which only goes one way and has only one platform. Just make sure you disembark at the right concourse. The North Satellite, or Concourse N, is another Alaska-exclusive concourse. This concourse is being renovated in phases, and this half just opened in July of 2019, while the other half is set to be completed by the end of 2021. Even before the sun's up, the space still feels open, inviting, and low stress. The People Mover is the fastest way to connect between C, D, and N gates, and the South Satellite Concourse has a similar setup, complete with its own three-stop People Mover. These two systems are disconnected from one another, but the stations for Concourse A and D connect the loops. Should you need to connect from one side of the airport to the other, you'll need to disembark at Concourses D or A, then board the platform on the other side of the station. This can be confusing, so make sure you check where you need to connect, disconnect, and reconnect to get to your gate. Finally, the South Satellite Concourse, or Concourse S, is home to nearly all intercontinental carriers, as well as long-haul domestic flights. All international arrivals are currently processed from the S-Gates, too. The North Satellite used to look a lot like the South, and a renovation might be on its horizon, too. 
SeaTac wastes no space and efficiently packs 70 gates into a small footprint. Getting around is as simple as possible given the complexities of multi-carrier travel like this, but when you travel through Seattle, your experience should be straightforward and hassle-free. Even though this tour was filmed in the early morning, before the sun was up, I hope it was useful to see Seattle's airport and get a feel for where to go and what to do while you're here. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to Miles by Foot and commenting below. I'm always thrilled to see how many of you provide insight into your home airports. Special thanks to my wife Beth, who let me run around at 5 in the morning on a tight layover to capture this footage. Until next time, thanks for watching, and keep moving forward.